Team Twitch Stars and Team The Gods, both the Taiwanese teams. And we're going to be starting off with Sharpedo versus Rekne. So Sharpedo here using his... Um, the signature mid-range Death Ledger Shadowcraft deck and Rekni playing the Ramp Dragon the Ramp Dragon with the Polyphonic Roar that every bit, everyone's been running now cracking the cold one with the boys <laughs> Alright, so Sharpedo. His hand is it's not that great. Like Grimnir into Earth is not going to be that good, especially when Dragon could possibly just play area or he's just ramping. So yeah, this Earth is just going to be a vanilla 3 3, it looks like. And I guess you just play it. There's no Dragon Warrior in Dragon in Ramp Dragon anymore, so it's not too bad just to play it as Temple. Unless you want to be really greedy and try to combo it later on with the Attendant of Night, but yeah, I like the air just coming down here. It would have been such a good turn for Sharpedo to have Death Ledger. So the Isla now from Rekni. And probably just going to be the Fina this turn. Fina and Evolve to trade into the Isla, just hit for 3. There's not too big of a difference. Actually, there is kind of a difference between 6 and 7. Because Dragons doesn't have, or this Dragon list doesn't have a 6 play. But 7, they have Saha Quill. So. Sharpedo might might give Rekni the ramp into the Saha. If he if he takes the trade though, he might just evo the Fina and not attack with her. I can definitely see that. You don't have to trade here because you're because Rekni's probably going to trade the Isla into the Fina anyways, since Fina doesn't die directly to Blazing Breath. Blazing Breath wouldn't even be good here. Yeah, so he decides not to attack with the Fina. It makes a lot of sense because it does play around the Sahakuo coming out this turn. And since Breath of Salmon does nothing, Rekin is going to have to find something else to do. It's going to be the Sybil. Sybil's pretty good, it trades over the Fina. And he's going to trade the Isla into the Ur to get the ramp as well. And this is going to be the full clear with the Blazing Breath. It's a really good, really good turn for the Dragon. Oh, he's just going to attack phase 2 with that Isla. Fair enough, this Dragon deck does have... It has two Zeus's as its 10 drop Storm. But it does have the Polyphonic Roar, which might win the game. Um, Sharpedo's list does play a Mordecai, so the Mordecai could be problem for dragons later on. Trace the Erd. Now he now Sharpedo has enough shadows for this Death Breath. Death Breath is always good to play on 6 when you have enough shadows to get the wards out. Yeah, and there is a Sahako Sharpedo was playing around the previous turn. He's refilled. <laughs> His refill would have been such a disaster if Sharpedo didn't have enough shadows there for the Death Breath. Hmm. Yeah, Shadow's actually in a rough spot right now. Sharpedo just has like all of these two drops, 
and they're very low impact, and all of these two drops die to Israfil, and he's not anywhere close to killing Rekni with a Phantom Health. So we see what kind of line he takes here. He's playing a lot into the board. I'd assume he's. Is he going to evolve to train into the Sahakul? Because if he doesn't, then playing all of these is a waste because his referral would just come down this turn. And clear. Yeah, so he's going to evolve to trade into the Saha. But he, yeah, Sharpiel is in a really bad spot because this Saha doing, still could come down this turn, clear the board. I guess, I guess the Lich will be up, but it's going to be a 10-10. And even with the Lich up, it's not going to do anything. Or even better, just the um, the Hamid coming down this turn. Not going to evolve here. Wants to play around. Um, actually, there's no Soul Squasher in this deck, but he doesn't have to evolve to trade into his Lich, feeling comfortable about his life. Especially knowing that he has a Sala in his hand, he has an additional 4 life next turn. And if Rekni has a Grimner here, it's just game. Yep. The classic follow up Bahamut into Grimnir. Just to just wreck your opponent. And that's going to be game one going to wreck me from Twitch stars. So now Rekni just has to win with his sword deck, and this is the, um, oh yeah, this guy, Rekni was the one playing the sword deck with the luminous mages in it. It's, I would say it's a mid-range, got floral fencers, one fang blade, a we does. It tops off at the fang blade. Overall, it's just like a solid... Just like playing a bunch of good sword cards in it and try to close it out with the Albert Enhance. So Sharpedo with the... It's a decent hand here. I guess he wants to consider if he wants to hold on to this Erd or not. Erd would be good if he draws into a Attendant Knight on 3. Looks like he's going to throw it back. He did draw into the Attendant Knight. But he still has a good curve. He has the 2, 3, 4. Not as strong as it could have been if he picks up an Erd. But it's still good nonetheless. The Unicog is going to come down. For this will force Rekni to try to do something about it. Otherwise, this Taji did pretty much nothing. Not even going to attack. Not going to bother using the APM. So this Unicog is going to trade into the Veteran Lancer. Now, will Sharpedo go for the Grimnir? Yeah, he's going for the Grimnir over the Hell's Unleasher. I mean, over the Attendant of Night. And he's not going to attack with the Unica. He wants the... Oh, they're both not trading. They don't want to take those uh, un unlikely trades. I mean, either way, the Screamer is going to trade into the Van Lancer no matter what. I kind of like Sharpedo not trading with the Unica though, because now it's still on the board. Still forces right need to trade into it at some point. Which could soak possibly more than 2 damage. Okay, Rekni going for these trades here. Besides, he doesn't want to kill the Lich. And instead, going to evolve the Taji to go face. Rekni realizes that he is playing the Sword deck, which is not as powerful to the Shadow deck. So later in the game, Shadow's probably going to outvalue the sword and just get get the board control. Especially with that Death Ledger still on the board. So he just wants to get that face damage in and try to close out the game as soon as possible. 
But how long is she going to the yeah the channel? That way, Gino can't trade into the lich. Three liches on the board now for Shapito. Taji could trade into one of them if he wants. Or he could continue to go face. Though, I'm not too sure how well that will turn out. Since there's a death breath next turn. So, we're actually going to take the trades here. Will he go face with Taji? The Grimner is a 4 1. It does trade into another Lich. So, I can see the reasoning for going face. Especially because he went face last turn. Be it would be consistent with his play. Alright, so he does take the trade. Will it be... I feel like Death Breath is powerful this turn. Because anything he plays from hand, if he wants to go over the Grimner, it just dies. Uh, so he could possibly just Death Breath and pass. Or you can evolve the Attendant Knight and trade it into the Grimner and get another Lich off of it. That would be decent. That's what he's going to do, and he's going to get 4 damage in. He, Sharpedo is starting to get the board over Sword now. But Sword is fighting back. It's still actually a really close game. Both players. Because we can see Sharpedo's hand right now, his hand does look really good. Like he's going Death Breath into a Mordecai next turn. And he's just going face with that Lich. He does not care. He's gonna let one zombie die to the night. But he still has two more zombies out. I do think it makes sense to hit face there. That four damage easily become a lot more. Um. Turn 7 for the sword player, he doesn't have any turn 7 plays per se, but he has, he can have a combination of cards. All we do is, he has to deal with one more zombie, and do you just, is he going to trade 3 of these 1-1s one in? Yeah, it looks like it. Just wants to get that out of the way while he can, in case later on he can't. And it's just that one zombie blocking him from killing Sharpedo. Although Sharpedo is at 16 right now. And Rekni is out of evil points. So this is going to be a hard game for the sword to come back from. So does Sharpedo go for the zombie party or the Mordecai here? Or he could go Ledger and Hell's Unleash. But yeah, I do think the zombie party is good because he gets to push 4 damage this turn and he's setting up lethal. And Ragnar is just trying to survive on the skin of his teeth. I think here Sharpedo could go for the trade and then go face for 6 and then play Mordecai. Because you just put your opponent down to 3 life then you have the Mordecai that's always going to be on the board. 
Um, the only thing that would stop you is like an Alita's, maybe? Not even though, because you're going to still have other minions besides the Mordecai. So I like pushing face for 6, though you could play it really safe and trade into the um, Albert. But there's no two cards where Sword could have where you just die out of nowhere. Oh yeah, going for 4 is fine too, because now you just... Yeah, because they're at 4 life. More okay, 5, what am I even saying? And that's going to be the top left for... Rekni. And Sharpedo ties it up, 1-1. One, one. Shadow gain a win, not too surprised there. And now we're going to get into the interesting game where it's going to be Swordcraft versus Runecraft. Uh, this rune from Sharpedo is a temple rune. And it's the more standard temple rune you expect to see with two mutagenic bolts and the whole temple rune package. Yeah, <laughs> Alright, so Sharpedo opened up with a Conjure Golem and two Ogglers. So this hand does look a bit awkward, but it could easily become a power hand if he picks up the right cards. There could be a turn where Sharpedo just goes, um, plays a spell or Clark, and then goes Ogler, Ogler. Oh man, this hand could be insane if he picks up a Clark next turn. So the soul swinging sword We're gonna stop that in the place Shapiro going for the conjure golem Because the spell boosts his entire hand Better than just playing the witch chat hmm. Oh man like a clark would have been insane with this hand Did he take the value trade and just trade into the knight? Yep, I'm gonna do that. I think that's, that's worth it. You just take one extra point of damage, but your golem could possibly hit two, kill two followers. The floral offensive here is a really good card this turn for Rekni, especially because he gets the evil first. And there's no good answer to this at the moment for Sharpedo. His hands just. It's just Wachets and Ogglers. Oh, the clutch, Levi. Fortunately, there's no piercing rune, but even that Crimson Sorcery is giving him four play points essentially by spell boosting four followers. And then, yeah, just go and play one witch head here, trade into the 2 2. So turn 5 for swords. Doesn't he wouldn't have really good I guess Luminous Mage would be pretty good, but instead he's gonna go for a Grimnir and Veteran Lancer. It's a train to the Levi. This Daria is gonna be very important for Sharpedo if he can pick up a good hand. I don't think he plays it this turn though, he picks up the second Levi, so he definitely wants to evolve that. And if he goes for the Levi, he could also play the Ogler and the Wichet, so he's getting the most out of his hand here. So I would like to see the Levi this turn over the Wichet and Daria, and it looks like that's what he's going to do. Looks super solid. Next turn he can refill his hand. I'm just going to go face here with the Wichet. 
This is a more Temple Rune is quite an aggressive deck now, so they do need to get this extra point of damage in. Because that extra damage could make a difference when you're trying to combo or put together a little bit of burn damage like magic missiles and angelic snipes. Gino coming down for Rekni. Gets the two knights off of it because he has the enhanced ability. And now he's going to involve a knight to trade into a witch set and go face with this one one knight. Um, it's an okay hand for it's a good okay play for sword, but this turn it's going to be even better for the rune. Picks up a magic missile, which can deal with that three one quite nicely, and he gets to play an ogler with it. It's a pretty good pickup there for Sharpedo. Going to push five more this turn. I would assume he goes phase instead of trading there, since that's what he did last turn. And this is a really hard turn, hard board for sort to get through now, especially with their tools. They don't really have, they don't have any AOEs. They only have single target stuff like Dance of Death and then Rush Followers. Even if he has a Rush Follower, it doesn't really do anything. Or even if, or if he had like a Luminous Mage, the buffs on his knights don't make too much of a difference. He could trade like an Ogler and a Witchette. <laughs> Instead, go and go for another Geno just to trade off an Ogler and a Witchette. He could have traded into the Daria and the Witchette since he had the Taji. He gets a little bit more damage in, but is he just dead here? That's 4 damage in the hand plus 5 plus 3. So not quite enough, but he gets to kill two followers and put his opponent at one. And he has a mutagenic bolt for the next turn to finish it off. So it does look like this set will be going to Sharpedo here from Team the Gods. Yeah, there's no way that Sword could stop this. He's trying, like, if there was no Mutagenic Ball in Sharpedo's hand, there might have been a way to win if he had uh, Albert for next turn. So yeah, Sharpedo taking game one for his team, or a set one for his team. Let me pull out the next player's deck list. Um, so next up for representing Team Go the Gods will be Tong. And he's going to be going up against Twitch Stars QTT6. <coughs> See if we can fast forward here to where the game starts. Alright, cool. So it looks like it's going to be Tong starting off with his dragon versus QTT6, the shadow. And the shadow list from QTG6 will be uh, mid range shadow with two fan featuring two phantom pals and two death breaths. Rabbit necromancer. So he's playing more of an aggressive style of shadow. And then Tong here with his dragon will be the same ramp dragon that. Um, as the last game, which is a ramp dragon, it's like a pretty standard ramp dragon with a polyphonic roar. Oh, 
对，至少撑到可以斗气，让你可以抽到那张牌的。So, in Tong's hand, he does have a fervor, and I'll be able to ramp him up to Saha Quill. Although he doesn't have a follower to go with the Saha. 不错，这边这张骑士还可以接受。不过这骑士要不要 ？Picks up the drag, dragon orco now, and that's going to mean he's going to dragon orco this turn into fervor next turn into ouroboros. So now suddenly tongue's curve looks a bit better. I assume you use the dragon orco this turn, unless you want to save it to cycle. But then I don't think you have the luxury against Shadow to do that, especially in this more aggressive list that QTT Six is running. Will he use the? Salmon is brass. It it seems like such a waste. I don't think he would do it. I guess he's considering more if he wants to go face or just trade into that bone chimera now. The merit of trading to the bone chimera is that if he QTD six trades both skeletons in, at least you clear that. But going face seems to be a bit better, most on average. We get so many things to go wrong if you just trade and don't take the two damage. Like your opponent could just have easy removal for it. Um, QTT6 is running. Oh, he's not playing. S or or Thrus. He's only playing the catacombs. Catacombs this turn would be all right. Probably not the best. He's going to go for the Skeleton Knight. Evolving the Skeleton Knight over the Grimnir here. I guess to poke a damage with that Bone Chimera. Does he have anything else to go with this Skeleton Knight? Or is it just going to be his turn here? I mean, this, this isn't too bad for QT6. Like, Tong wants to fervor this turn. And that uh, skeleton knight is going to be on the board for a turn to smack Tong for five. You got a fervor here, like Salmon is breath of nuts. It, it does. It takes three damage off the board, but then you don't get to play Ouroboros next turn. Like Ouroboros does three and heals three. Like it is. Essentially, he has almost like six life or more. So, I do think you want to ramp up into your Ouroboros, and you get a draw card, so you get to a get more cards, so you have more options later on, and you'll have more play points sooner. So you'll have the play the resources available to use your options. So, it decides to use the burst of salmon. Doesn't want to take that damage. Because he does know that QTT6 is playing the more aggressive deck, and if he takes too much damage, he might just die to things like um, Phantom Howl and Cerberus. The turn five here for QTT six. His on curve play would be a Cerberus, but he might have a combination of cards that make that's slightly better. He could also be considering if he wants to evil one of his skeletons to just push that extra damage in, because he gets to push five. Which doesn't put Tong at 11, so you don't have that magic number for turn 6, at least so with the Phantom Hell. But <laughs> this is still adding a lot more pressure. Because, your because now Tong has to remove both, wants to remove both 3-3s. Three and QTT6 can evolve again next turn and do more damage. So Tong, he didn't take the ramp last turn, so he can't play Ouroboros. He would have been able to. Um, Ouroboros and Evo to trade. However, if he didn't use the Salamander's Breath last turn, he would have taken a lot more damage as well. So he's going to go for the Fervor this turn, picks up the... Another Breath, or <laughs> they're both Breaths, I guess. Only gets to play one of them this turn, removes three damage from the board. 
Next turn he has Ouroboros plus Dragon Dragon Breast available, so that's like that's gonna be a pretty decent turn for Tom. He can also use the Breast of Salamander to possibly clear this board. It's gonna be interesting to see if QTD6 takes the evil on his Shadow Reaper because that would play around the Breast of the Salamander and essentially make it useless because if you Breast of the Salamander you're just buffing the Reaper more. And he's gonna go for it. Good play there by QTD6. So he pushes 4 more damage, Tongue's at 12. Oh, he's going to go for the, the Mimi. I, I would assume you just play Coco too, if you have the play points. Yep. So it's a very powerful turn here for QT6, and now... What does Tongue have? The aggressive Salamander. The Reaper goes up to 7 attacks, so that's going to be very scary because he's going to breast the Salamander and that takes up his entire turn. He doesn't have anything that he could play with it. But if he doesn't breast the Salamander, he could or borrow Blazing Breast Evil trade, and that would be. He would still be one off. QT6 would, still would be one off. So yeah, it makes more sense to go for the Ouroboros because that could, once it dies, it will give you some more life. Whereas Breath of Salamander would just be that, that turn. So one damage is all QTG6 needs, just uh, Ector, Cerberus, Phantom Hell. It's gotta be it, right? Yep. So game one going to the shadow player. Might as well, when someone queues in Shadow, you might as well give them the free win. Because Shadow's gonna get a win. No matter what. Oh, these series start off with a one lead one game lead handicap. But QTD6 now just has to take a win with his Forest Craft. And his Forest deck is the OTK Roach. No bolts in it, no no white wolves. He's playing the combination where he's playing the Pixie Mistress, Wood King Curse, and Angelic Snipes. That way he only has to play the Maze and the Roach as his Goblin Mage target. And Tongo and Q in his Bloodless. So this is the. It's just a act with the Vengeance Blood. The standard Vengeance Blood that we're all used to seeing. Has, he has the Bell Fricker and the Air Jammers. That's what you want to see on turn 4 and turn 5, but. I don't know if you want to hold down your mulligan against Forest because you just you could just straight up lose in the early game, and then by the time you play Belfigur, you might just die. Fairy Circle from QT6, what you want to do on turn 1 as a forest. Because now he has the possibility of going for the Ancient Elf, but Tong here has the Hungering Horde to deal with that. And he actually did decide to go for the Belfiger Air Jammer Keep, and he got, he's going to get rewarded for it because he was able to stagger off the first couple of turns, and he gets. He has the demo of vengeance for turn three, so he has the god curve. Even has two air jammers, so on four you Belfiger, five you air jammer, six you air jammer again with the diabolic drain. It looks like it could be a blowout. We'll see if that comes true here. Looks like QTG6 is setting up for a Ancient Elf. 
After going to get run over by the bell for good. Okay, not bad of a pickup. He picks up the spider web and he does want to get them off the blimp, the air jammers, but having them in your hand so you can guarantee play one on turns where you need to block roach damage is pretty good. But yeah, this is a rough spot now for QT6. Does he have the Sylvan Justice to deal with his Belfigur easily? QT6 is really far behind here because he has to use his entire turn to clear a Tong's board, and then Tong is just going to drop that air jammer and refill. Starts off with the Goblin Mage. He does have the Sylvan Justice, so he's he will be able to clear this board. I was saying earlier, Tong is playing a more standard Vengeance Blood, but he is playing the uh, Executioner. So it's like slightly not as standard because not many pe not everyone runs that card. Like triple Executioner, triple Flower Beds. All right, that's a that's a pretty good pull off of Tong. He gets Spider Web him and a Urius. Urius behind the ward is like very annoying for. Forced to get through that. He doesn't get the, the Blood Wolf, which he may have wanted to evolve to hit face for four, but can't really complain. Like, he has the God Curve. The second air jammer he plays will probably pull some Blood Wolves. It's interesting to note that Tong's deck also just runs one Hungry Horde that he played earlier and then two Blood Packs. So he's got a lot more self-afflicting cards. He's going to evolve his Urius because he's going to evolve again and he's going to be able to push face. Probably with two Evolve followers. So it makes sense to Urius to evolve the Urius now. It also makes it harder to kill. So the Urius damage is going to do a lot more. Like something like the World of the Forest could possibly have cleared some stuff. Though it was unlikely, but yeah, what do you do? You're just gonna have to. You're gonna have to use the dance of death to just kill out the spider web. And wants to remove the taunt or the ward, so he's setting up for a roach combo, I guess. Wants to kill off the air jammer. He doesn't want to take too much damage because if he does have a roach combo, that Urius might kill him. So. Now for Tong, he has to decide if he wants to go for the air jammer. He's gonna be risking it. Like if he just pulls double blood wolf, he might risk dying to a roach. Otherwise he could drop a spider web imp this turn and go Succubus or a second Urius for a more defensive play. Okay, he's gonna go for it. Yep, the succubus as well. I think you could play. Can you play the flower bed? Does he need to play the flower bed? Is the question. Because if he plays the flower bed, maybe he can't win. But with only seven play points off of Q QTD six, like I don't think he's going to be able to clear the ward and then do enough damage where the flower bed would stop would kill Tong. Tong's thinking if he wants to evil the spider web imp, I guess, or possibly the succubus. Yeah, so he's going to evolve the spider web imp, just going to be extra safe here. And the succubus is going to do the extra 2 damage. He does decide to go for the flower bed as well. And that's a lot of health for it for blood now. 
For an aggro deck, you would expect their followers to have less health than that, but... Two EVO'd followers... Yuri has been on the board. Looks like that's going to be it for QTT6. I'm trying to think if there's any answer he could possibly have, but I don't think there's any. Even if he has two roaches, the ro he has to run both roaches in if he wanted to kill that spider web. Then. That's pretty sad. And then if he does that, he just dies because he would be have. Uh, Tongue would have Lisa on board because of the Urius effect. So it might be the, the best play for QTT6 here might just be the top left button up there. <laughs> yep, so that's gonna be it. And Tong gonna tie it up 1 1 with his blood. And now it's gonna be a battle between Shadow and Dragons. I mean, not Shadow, uh, Forest and Dragons. Okay. Typically, Forest should have a good matchup against Dragons, although last night we did see a Dragon with like tr triple 10 drops in his hand against the Forest and still win the game in his opening hand. And he, yeah, he still won. So anything could happen. In Shadow verse. Tongues? He got a decent hand here. Will he keep. He wants to find a Dragon Oracle. But does he keep like a 5 cost ramp? And dump everything. And dump the rest? Like, does he just keep Fervor here? Or would he just keep Lirio to try to contest on board? The problem with Lirio is that he's going to be taking up a card in your hand. You just play it. If you're playing on turn 2, you're not Dragon Oracling. And then the Lir Lirio could just be traded in by a fairy plus a May or like a Sylvan Justice. So I'm not too sure. I'm not too convinced if it's good enough. Alright, so he just decided to keep his entire hand actually. <laughs> and he looks like he's going to curve quite decently. The Seven Justice is coming out from QT6. I guess it made a difference because Tong is going first, so he gets the initiative going into his or he could get to fervor on turn five and then he gets Sybil on the following turn oh he threw away the fervor and got it back okay got distracted by Ch twitch chat <laughs> Alright, so it's just gonna be an ancient elf for QTD6, and that it's just going to trade directly with that Scyther. Not too much of a good play for Tong here. He could play the Scyther again, and then that would stop EPM, or it would contest EPM. So I do like dropping the Scyther this turn.
妖精，这边是用呃小妖精进化。Alright, so QGG six is just going to evolve to fairy to trade into the scyther. Not that pretty for him. Now Tom gets a free turn where he could just play that. Play the fervor. I would imagine he fervor over the Sybil. If he plays Sybil, it just gets traded into by Fina, unless he evolves it. So, and then if he evolves Sybil, he could get punished by Damsel Death. So I do like the fervor this turn, and it will be the Fina Chan for Q T T Six this turn. He's going to evolve it now. Get that Goblin Mage. Picks up a second Sybil. It's pretty good. It, the Sybil trades well into the Fina, but Tom could also go for Saha Quill plus Bahamut to trade into it, and then he's left with a four four. But Tom's going to go for the Sybil instead. Gets to ramp up. Gets closer to just naturally playing that uh, Bahamut, which could just be like. Forest might just not have an answer to that Bahamut. There's how many Dance of Death in the Forest? Well, there's only one Dance of Death, so. If the Bahamut sticks, it's just like GG there. Gonna be the will of the Forest for QT6 to clean up this board. It's gonna take his entire d turn again. Uh, so Tong gets the initiative to go for Sybil or Ayla, or he could play the Fervor in Ayla as his current options. If he knows he's going to play Bahamut next turn, there's some merit to just playing Fervor, because the Bahamut will clear the board when your opponent is spends his turn developing. Whereas if you play Sybil this turn, your opponent might just have like a, another Fina and trades over it. And then you play Bahamut, but you lose your followers. So yeah, Tong's going to go for the fervor here. And let's play the Isla or the Oracle to cycle. I think because he went for the fervor, he's going to go for the Oracle. Since he's probably just playing Bahamut. Yep, so that's what he's going to do. Yeah, that's going to be his turn. It's going to be EPM for QT6. Going to evolve it, get the three, the three zero cost, the two zero cost fairies. Um, so he's, he, he is setting up for a combo, it appears. He does have a goblin mage in his hand that costs zero as well from the Fina he played earlier. Hasn't played any other goblin mages up to that point though, so not too sure if he has any roaches in his hand already. Any, like if he has roaches and guidance, I imagine Bahamut just coming down this turn. Because uh, you, the maximum your opponent's gonna have is like. 17, right? Because they could play three zero cost cards. Then Roach, Bounce, Roach, Roach would be 17. Yeah, 4, 6, 7, 10, 7. So Bahamut is safe this turn. Like, if you don't play Bahamut this turn, when you should be safe, uh, when do you ever play it? You just never, you'll just never be able to play it if you, go, if you don't play it now. If he goes for the Breath of the Salamander, he could clear the board, which Bahamut would have done, and then he just plays an Isla or a Grimnir, and that's like considerably weaker because it gives QTD6 more turns where he could develop, where he could set up a bigger combo, and your ward's not going to do that much anyways. Or you have to waste a Grimnir. So Tong probably just taking his time, making sure that QTT6 can't kill him this turn. And drops the Bahamut. QTT6 probably just going for it. Ooh. Maybe he has a triple roach. 
That would be five, six, seven. Oh wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Six, seven, eight. Does he actually have triple roach? He only played one goblin mage this game. Wow. And that's gonna be it. Granted, like the the goblin mages do have a uh, fifty percent chance of pulling the roach because he's only got roach and maze, but. But two, he just naturally drew two roaches. Or maybe he naturally drew all three roaches there, and then the color mage just pulled the May. Like, we don't know. Wow, that was a crazy game. And that's going to be the win for QTT6. Tying it up one and one between the gods and Twitch stars. So that's going to be taking it to match point for the teams. The god still has Wan Shaki Da Ki Wan Fu, which translates to evil spirits. Well, that's not the full translation, but I would just say evil spirits. And then, or I think this the stream had a different name for him. We will see. Let me pass fast forward a bit here. Alright, so we're in here. We got Evil Spirits first from Team Gods versus Mr. Miss. And this is going to be game 3 between the teams. Or match 3, I guess. Mr. Miss with his Blood and Rune, and the Gods. Or uh, evil spirits with haven and forest. So as we can see here, evil spirits has the um, storm haven, and this is the full on storm haven. It's not like a hybrid with Aegis or anything. It's full on storm, and the rune list from Mr. Miss is the D chef. Uh, not D chef. Sorry, the temple rune. Just a standard temple rune. And just to remind you guys that for this format, um, during each team, each player brings two classes to the tournament and they all have to be different from their teammates. So each team brings six different classes in total. Just so you guys know, in case you're wondering why each player is not playing like Shadow Dragon in their lineup. Evil Spirit's got the nice curve, the 1, 2, and 3s. And next turn, he's going to be able to drop a Grimnir, which, which is pretty annoying for Mr. Mist to get through. He's going to have to either use his turn to um, kill it, or I mean, trade both of these Craigs to kill it, or he's just going to have to use some of his play points to use a spell and remove it. Um, oh, but that, the beast called Arya pickup, it gives evil spirits, yep, yeah, which he's going to go for, he's going to go for the two, two cost cards. It sets up the Arya earlier, so he, it comes out earlier. And his board is going to be, oh, and class will glow pretty good here for Mr. Miss, denying that Arya, otherwise Arya plus... Um, the Falcon coming out in one turn is kind of crazy. And he has a Levi, so the Levi is going to come out evil to train to the Wing. Good to note that he did use the Kaleidoscope Glow first in case he draws into a Piercing Rune. Alright, so what's, what? was going to look like a good turn for evil spirits is actually kind of a rough turn for him now after that turn for mr miss uh, 
Like, his hand's just a bunch of emulus. Next turn's going to be good because he has Dark John. But this turn, what does he do? I guess you could trade the... Do you trade the Falcon? I think you would have to trade the Falcon into the Levi just because you're taking too much damage. Or actually, you could go Beast Call Aria plus Grimmir, Evo the Ar Evo the Grimmir to go over the Levi, and then just go face with the Falcon. But he's going to go for the trades instead. He doesn't want to take too much damage from the Temple Rune. Uh, this kind of makes it look like Mr. Miss wants to go Gerudo next turn. Gerudo will be able to pop his more expensive Aria, he's called Aria, and then the following turn he gets a sec the other Aria to pop. So it does make his next two turns really well if he goes for that line of play. And the way he traded like this, it makes it so he doesn't have to play the Dark John this turn. But Mr. Miss with the piercing rune, probably gonna... I would imagine he evils this Craig just so he could push 4. They're going to evolve the Blade Mage, doesn't really make a difference which one he does there. Alright, so he picks up a second Garuda. Going to go for the Garuda. The, the Dark Giant does like that thing this turn, so. Makes sense. And the board goes back for the Haven, but not going to be enough. As he took too much damage from that previous turn. And the Mog Strike closing it out. So game one going to Mr. Miss. And now Miss and now Twitch stars are on match point for this entire for this semifinal. And Mr. Miss is left off with his blood deck. And this is the um it's a more interesting vengeance it's still vengeance blood, but he's got like the blood pack one blood pack, a mask, a black darkness, one soul dealer. Cause he's got imp lancers, one imp lancer and an alley card in his deck for the top end. And Evil Spirit's gonna try to get his win with his Haven again. It is Conquest, so it doesn't matter if he IQ'd Forest or Haven, they both have to beat this blood deck. But I do imagine that the they both have a decent chance, it's really going to depend how Mr. Miss curves with his blood. Alright, so he's got secret, sacred plea into dogma. So he's gonna draw some cards, but will it be good enough? Like, okay, he picks up the beast called Arya. That's a really good draw. Next turn, he's gonna be able to play plea plus dogma. Or is just playing Grimner this turn better? Oh, wow. Or you could just play that the Heavenly Falcon. Or Divine Bird Song, sorry. Go and go for that instead. Seems good. Setting up his next couple of turns. <laughs> no evil available yet for evil spirits, so if he uses a dogma, it's not that great because it won't do anything. Uh, so I could possibly just see the... 
I could possibly just see the Grimnir this turn, plus the Plea. And then next turn he could Evo the... The Kujo and probably clear the board. So next turn for Evo Spirit is looking really powerful. Belfagor from Mr. Miss, what he wants to see. Will it be good enough or will Evo Spirit's next power turn going to be better? Take 3 damage. So how does this work out? He can... Evil the Kujo to banish the wolf. Um, it's, it's actually kind of weird. How do you do this? You could trade the falcon into the spider web imp and then you Kujo... Actually, do you even Kujo this turn? You could possibly go Lirio. Lirio ping the Belfagor. Lirio trades into the Spiderweb Imp, and then you trade the Falcon into Belfagor. The Holy Falcon, and then the Raptor goes into the Blood Wolf. That's one clear. If he goes for Kujo, Kujo's trades, he would have to trade. He loses both the. I guess it doesn't make too big of a difference because either way he's losing the, both his birds on the trades. Going to start off with uh, Dogma, which means he's going for the Lirio instead of the Kujo. They both have similar outcomes, it just depends which one he prefers to throw out first because the order he plays the Kujo and the Lirio could make a slight difference. Besides, they'd rather have the Holy Falcon over the Lirio from those trades. And there are two Garudas in, in Evil Spirits' hand right now. That's very scary, especially because Mr. Mist just played the Bell for Greens at 10. So that's already 6 in the hand for Mr. Mist. Two from the pinion prayer, that's eight. And it's seven on the board of still. Technically it's already ten if you evolve the pinion prayer. And then you play two Garudas, so in two turns you could kill Mr. Miss if he doesn't heal. Uh, so Mr. Miss, if he has the if he has the air jammer this turn, is it good enough? Air jammer, he evolves the air jammer to kill the tiger, but the falcon still up. Okay, dialogue drains nice, gets some life. He decides that he wants to. Belfagor after, so he goes back up to 10 when he could have been at 12. I'm not sure, if you're playing against... Unless he's playing... Mr. Miss is playing into his next turn where he needs to be in Vengeance, then this makes sense. So what do you do here? You Garuda? Gerudas, you push 3, you possibly do 5, eh, it's like not that great, you can, maybe you just dance the dust this turn, if you dance the dust this turn, your opponent goes to 8, you have 4 on your board next turn with the opinion per evil, so you need 4 more damage, Gerudas would be 1 off, it's actually a pretty hard turn for evil spirits then. Nothing is really good. He could go... He could Dogma plus Kujo and evolve the Kujo so he clears the Belfagor and has a 4-5 and a 2-1. That actually looks like the best play at the moment. For me. 
Because that way he doesn't have to evolve like a follower and it dies at the same time. He's gonna go for the dance of death instead. Which is still good. He wants to save the evil. So he could go face with it directly. Because they've evolved Kujo, that, Ku that 2 damage might just get lost. So what would Mr. Miskun have here? Turn 6. You have an Imp Lancer. It'll be lethal for Evil Spirits if he picks up a, another opinion prayer. But that's about it. Mr. Miss can't do any more self-inflicting damage to him. Like, 8's just a magic number at the moment. Except the Blood Wolf and the Urius. Does he evolve the Blood Wolf? He will. So this kind of, This opens him up for Kujo now. If Kujo gets to banish the Wolf trade into the Bell for your... Oh! And that's just... That's just it! That's 9 damage. So a good top deck there for Evil Spirits. Able to tie up the series 1-1. One and, one. and wow, this is actually coming down to a very intense semi-final because now both teams are on match point for the entire, entire series. That was a yeah, that was very clutch for Evil Spirits. If he didn't have Lethal there, would he just die the next turn? He would have been at like seven or nine, somewhere between seven and nine life, just to remove two followers probably. So it was definitely really close. Because we don't know what Mr. Miss had in his hand. He could have had a lot of burn. Alright, so this is a match point. Between Forest and Vengeance Blood. This is going to be a... This is the White Wolf Forest. As we can see here with that double White Wolf. He's playing one copy of Fairy Whisper as well, as well. Looks like he's going through them all back. That's fine. Like Fairy Whisper is a good card if you're playing against slow decks to just have in your hand. You don't get a draw off Goblin Mage. Uh, but against Vengeance Blood, you just want to throw it out way. Ideally, you want to find the Fairy Circle into Double Fairies into Ancient Elf on three. That's the ideal ideal curve. If you don't get that curve. It's it feels kind of rough if your opponent, if the if the blood has like their their nutty curve. But if, you, if, if both Forest and Vengeance Blood draw the nuts, I'm pretty sure Blood still wins. Picks up the fairy circle, so that's real. That's what. That's what. Uh, that's what evil spirits wants. Shouldn't be a turn one play for vengeance here. Yeah, there's no one drops in this deck. So double fairies here is going to go into a four or five ancient elf for evil spirits. It's looking good, he even picks up a Fina for turn 5 when he gets the evil. Um, there's 3 hungry hordes in this list for Mr. Miss, so he could have a hungry horde to deal with the fairies, shuts down the ancient elf power. No, but just going to be the spider web imp. Snap call that ancient elf. There's no answer to this that Blake could possibly have. The spider web imp does stop four damage going to them. Not that they would mind taking four because he played Belfigur on four anyways, but it's still very annoying for the blood player. 
big roadblock. Let's have the Devil of Vengeance. So if he does a Belfer Girl next turn, he's he's still definitely in this game. Like we might have we might have the situation where I was talking about earlier where both players just have a ninety hand. Um so for Miss for Evil Spirits, does he just go double fairies and fairy whisper or does he want to play the Fina and the Fairy? Go for the Goblin Mage. And Goblin Mage is better here, in my opinion, because um the fairy was uh, the glimmering wings. <laughs> what am I saying? Fairy whisper for the glimmering wings is a very slow play. You would do that if you're playing against a control deck, like or like a s slow deck. Like, what would you even do it against? Aegis Haven, maybe. But most of the time, he would just goblin mage fairy there. You could just le weave in the glimmering wings later on because next turn you're going to be playing Fina almost every time, anyways. So does is there oh no Belfigur just a dark general not the greatest for Mr. Miss it's just gonna have to evolve it when it should have storm most of the time just to trade over that ancient elf and the devil of Vengeance can't attack it either now this fairy could trade into that dark general and the Fina Chan can come down and kill that devil of Vengeance. So this is actually looking really good for Evil Spirits now. He's going to save his Goblin Mage. He does have two Roaches in his hand, so saving the Goblin Mage makes a lot of sense because that could add to his combo damage. And to start looking towards closing this game out. Even has the Elf Queen in his hand, so even if it took a lot of damage, the Elf Queen could bring him right back up. So what does Mr. Miss have? If he has Air Jammer, I guess it's alright, he's able to trade over the Fina. And then he, I guess, would ideally want the Blood Wolf to trade into the Goblin Mage. But he just gives up his turn and goes back to the initiative of Evil Spirits. With the, the current hand for Evil Spirits, if he doesn't want to do like a small Roach combo, he might just go for the Goblin Mage, Fairy, and then Glimmering Wings. It's just going to be the dance of death for Mr. Miss. Aaron, that's not a bad pickup. He can just drop that as a 4 6. That's with a ward. That's going to be pretty hard for Mr. Miss to get over. Like, what could he even evolve into? He would have to evolve. He would have to have a Belfigur or a Soul Dealer. Or I guess a J Dark General. All of those are not that ideal. I guess Belfigur would be the best. Also, to keep in mind that um, Evil Spirits does have one Silver Bow in his hand, so what he could possibly do is go for the Roach play. With the Glimmering Wing, so his hand refills, and then he just plays to turn 9 where he can Silver Ball for lethal. It's gonna be the second Dark General for Mr. Miss. It looked like he bricked pretty hard this game. Probably forced to trade at this point, yep. 20 life for the forest on turn 7 against a Vengeance Blood. You don't see that every day. He could go off with the Goblin Mage first and see if he picks up a uh, Mei. Um, how, much, how much damage does he have? That's just it, right? 3 4 5, that's lethal. Play the Fairy first, then you go Triple Roach. Even has the Evil, so he has 14. Evil Spirits taking it! Taking it for the win for the gods. And they're going to be the first team going into the finals. Alright. Both Taiwanese teams. I think in our next match, 
They're both, yeah, it's going to be MSV versus Ice. So both Japanese teams. So we will have a Taiwan, Taiwanese versus Japanese 